Thank you very much and welcome to Channel 9's Grand Final Breakfast, proudly brought to you by our good friends at Carlton Draft and of course stay watching for the Carlton Draft Plastic Cup. Well, this of course is the uh, premier Grand Final Breakfast in Melbourne this morning, but there are so many Grand Final Breakfasts around the place. Carlton are holding theirs at the Sofitel, the Kangaroos are at the Hyatt, Hawthorne are at the Hilton, the West Coast Eagles are at Odyssey House. It really is just... <laughs> It really is just a remarkable morning in Melbourne. Uh, now, apologies to West Coast fans because just mingling outside before, I think we actually saw some West Coast supporters. Are there some Eagles fans here, are there? Quite remarkable. Get a little cocky when we made the bookings in June, did we? <laughs> or are you over here as bounty hunters trying to get Chris Judd back? But uh, I, suppose, I suppose from a Victorian point of view, I think I'm right in saying that we would have loved to have seen an all-Victorian grand final, would we not? I think so. But you've got to look on the bright side. The fact that Port Adelaide's over here, there are economic benefits to the state, with the Port fans making their way over. Uh, home security systems, of course, are on the rise. Uh, uh, steering wheel locks. And can I tell you, the good folk at Caribbean Gardens are absolutely wrapped because those, those Ugg boots are just walking out the door there at Caribbean Gardens. Always well, nice to get a bit of formal wear happening. Um, I can say that uh, I think we do actually have some Port Adelaide supporters with us, do we not? Where are the Port supporters? Yeah. Well, welcome to you. Welcome to you. Uh, if, you can, if the others can just bear with me for about 10 seconds, I just want to explain the silverware on your table. Uh, we call them knives and forks. <laughs> um, you might want to have a crack at those. Uh, but of course, you might be having the last laugh because uh, there is a bit of silverware up for grabs at the MCG today, and you may be. Just maybe we'll be walking home with that. But anyway, we've got a terrific two hours ahead of us. As you heard in the intro, we've got some of the finest acts, not just in Australia, but around the world. Uh, before we get into that, though, let's just uh, do a little bit of grand final housekeeping. Now, I know that grand final week is all about predictions, and uh, we've got our own predictions here, some going for Geelong, some going for Port Adelaide. The Weather Bureau had its own prediction. They predicted rain and dirty, dark clouds. Let's see if they got it right now as we take a live shot of the city of Melbourne. And, yeah, well... The Weather Bureau did it again. A beautiful day in Melbourne, just a little bit of light cloud, and hopefully, hopefully, we're in for a very, very fine day as the MCG comes to life a little later on. All right, let's, uh, talking of the MCG, let's have a look at the scenes there now, and you can see just massive crowds lining up outside the members. Hopefully, we don't see a repeat of what we saw last Friday night with Collingwood and Geelong when the members, there was just hell to pay there. But anyway, everything's in place, and some of those members have actually been queuing up since about Tuesday night. So they've been there with their sleeping bags, camping out, and the festivities already underway with those port supporters uh, really in tune with this year's grand final. We've got our roving reporters out and about, Michael Roberts and Chris Jones. Let's head back to the G now, where Chris is standing by. And how are you this morning, Chris? Hello, Tony. Good morning to everyone at the breakfast. This is the scene outside the MCC members. Already thousands and thousands of people. The people right up the front of the queue here have been queuing for almost two days. Where is my man, Andy? Now, we seem to talk to him every grand final day. Andy, it's been a long time, this one, hasn't it? Oh, she's been a long haul, mate. But it's all worth it. How long have you been here? Geez, I... Ask the cameras, mate, because they don't lie. But I've got no idea of time, you know. I don't even own a watch. Now, I know you've been here over two days. It's been pretty tough, hasn't it? Because it has been very cold and wet. It's been bloody cold and very, very, very wet this year, but it's been good. But you've got to go through purgatory before you get into paradise. How big is it going to be this year? It's huge, isn't it? It's going to be terrific, mate. No, we all, I think we all hope that Geelong are going to do it. They're doing it for Victoria, aren't they? It's been so long. Oh, yeah, go the mighty Vicks, the Blues. Hey, how many years in a row is this for you at the grand final and, and first in the queue? Well, I'm only 25, but I think it's the 38th year, so how does that work out? Oh, mate, it's absolutely fantastic. Now, the queues this year, are they bigger than normal? Well, not nearly as big as uh, last week when we had two Victorian sides, but yeah, the queues are right up there compared to uh, the last two years. All right, well, good luck. The long, long wait is almost over. Tony, I reckon we could be in for a crowd of possibly 100,000 again. All right, terrific stuff. Chris Jones there with Andy at the MCG. I think we might have to book Andy here to actually be here with us at the uh, grand final breakfast next year. All right, well, uh, I know that Geelong supporters are out and about up and early making their way up the highway. The Port Adelaide fans have been arriving through the week and again this morning, and that's where we find Michael Roberts. Good morning, Michael. Thanks, boys. I'm at the Oxford Scholar at this minute for breakfast. 
the Port Adelaide pub right here in the city. I know there's going to be a massive crowd at the MCG, over 98,000, but these people, they've had breakfast, they're starting early, they just want to march down and see a win. Port Adelaide haven't won since 2004, and I've got Malcolm, who runs the joint, who believes you can knock them over again. How, yeah. how will the boys go? Oh, I think they'll go all right. I think Choco's got a few things up his sleeve that he'll, uh, he'll, he'll pull out today. You've got a great affiliation with the club here, haven't you? Yeah, we have. Yeah, six years. And, um, and we get the players back and the, and the supporters back and we're the base in here. And we, we have some, some really good nights here. And I tell you what, you've got old ones, but you've also got tiny ones as well. And I've got little Hannah here, who's only six months old. Have a look at her, decked out in her gear. Isn't she beautiful? Just rearing to go for the footy. The power going to win? Yeah! You beauty. Just scared the suitcase out of Hannah. Back to you. I'm going to kiss the baby now. I don't think it was the fact that the uh, fan scared the baby. I think it was the fact it just got a look at itself in a port jumper. But anyway, <laughs> we'll cross back to Michael and Chris as the morning goes on. But right now, let's kick you off the entertainment. Could it get any better than this? He's got a new album out, a new CD. It's actually in the shops from today. James Rain. The CD is called Ghost Ships. And he's here today with one of the all-time classics, ladies and gentlemen, James Rain and Beautiful People. <laughs> Travel bag Do you Tiffle people They've got a price Upon their head Do you Tiffle people They've got some friends Who just flew in from L.A. Do you Tiffle people They haven't really Much to say People They just want to take you People They just want to make you People They just want to Break you down Wanna take you down A set of you Jivel people They ride two thousand dollar push bikes in the park Be you Jivel people They want a minute but they make love in the dark Be you Jivel people and pot of palm in the corner of the city room be you to the people the art deco sonic boom people they just want to take you people they just want to make you people they just want to break you down to Brett and Tracy. Well done to you. Thanks very much for coming along to the breakfast. Um, grand final day in Melbourne. Uh, Melbourne boy through and through. Does it get any better than that? It doesn't. No, it doesn't. It's a big build-up. It's all week. You know, you can. It's you really sense it every day of the week. It just gets bigger and bigger. Yeah. Who do you vote for? A uh, Carlton. Oh. <laughs> no, that's all right. That's Is all right. That, We're uh, building. We're yeah, building. Yeah. I have been building for a while now, but uh, that. Um, <laughs> 
It must be very awkward for a singer to not actually be able to sing your own same song. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Now, what about, uh, you, you've performed at the grand final a couple of times. I have times. a couple of times, yeah. uh, quite a few years ago, but I just remember it's sort of the same, I'm, I don't know what it's like for players, but this incredible build-up all week, and then you actually get out there and do it, and you sing a song and it's suddenly over it, you know, you suddenly think, what happened? You know, there was all week of this build-up and then it's all over. What about today? Who are you tipping? Uh, Geelong. Geelong. All right. Geelong, eight points, eight, nine points, within two goals. I think you're a good company. Once again, please thank James Rain and all the very best Thanks, with the album. Go ships. Thank you. We'll take a break on the Channel 9 Grand Final Breakfast. When we come back, the first of our star-studded panels. Yes, welcome back to Channel 9's Grand Final Breakfast, proudly brought to you by the Carlton Draft Plastic Cup. Well, we promised you the very, very best this morning, and we've got two sensational panels, the first of which joins us right now. Would you please make welcome one man who is extremely nervous today, Billy Brownless! <laughs> the dual premiership player for the Adelaide Crows, give him a round of applause, Mark Bickley! Former Melbourne champion, Gary Lyon. Yeah. <laughs> Save the boost for this man. He was named as the Radio Caller of the Year, Brian Taylor. <laughs> and the man voted as fullback for St Kilda's Team of the Century, but remarkably missed out on the Bungaree Team of the Century, Danny Frawley. Thank you. Thank you, Tone. Doing a marvellous job. Have a bit of a spell because you've got the best panel going around right now. These four men have been up since uh, six o'clock this morning for this very segment. That's how much preparation they've put into this. And uh, they're excited about it. Bill, you're up and about. We have to strap you down. Yes, you do, Gary. Did you sleep last night? Uh, I did with my brother, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, but he's from Tassie. Uh, but but uh, let me tell you, very exciting day. As the Geelong supporters out there will tell you, 44 years it's been, oh. Gary. 1963, oh. and it is time! <laughs> it is time! <laughs> Gary, it's what? time! Shut up. They've got to win it. Shut up, Bill, for a minute. Uh, Bix, you've come over from Adelaide. Now, a lot of talk about the um, Geelong Footy Club. Of course, they've been dominating, but Port Adelaide just snuck through beautifully. Very relaxed, calm. Chocos up and about. Absolutely. They've flown under the radar. They've had... Uh, there's no real expectation on Port Adelaide. They were thinking maybe they might sneak into the eight, but to make the grand final is an absolute bonus. And they have ten players that have been there before and won the, uh, oh. the big dance. So Arrogant, Bix. Uh, no, arrogant. No, I, don't think, I just think they're quietly confident. They know what is uh, necessary to get the job done. I think they're a, a quite a big chance of winning today. Now, Big Show out in the ground again today by all reports before the game. Is there any rumour in that? Any truth in it? I may be taking part in the pre-match entertainment along with a, a host... Another, another parade. Another <laughs> lap of honour, Bix. I've just been invited to... Uh, there's, there's a heap of... Don't tell players. us what it is, Bix. It's your 41st <laughs> lap of honour since you retired. Well, I just get asked and I just am happy to oblige. And what about you, number one? Because, Bud, we can't... <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have to refer to him now as number one. <laughs> Numero uno, you run into Brian. this man outside, now, Gary. just number one and bow. He's got the head wobble going <laughs> at the moment, guys. Oh, oh, shut up, you bloke. Right, <laughs> get number on one caller in the country. We're here to talk about the footy guys or what are we Yes we are Brian, you're running the show now. Let's, <laughs> let's have a look at the lineup for the Cats, just the one change of course and it was a Big much change. talked about, much discussed one. Mark Blake sadly being dropped after 22 games has been omitted and in comes a former captain Stephen King, we'll discuss that in greater detail but uh, I'm not going to ask you Bill because you get a bit excited. What do you like about that uh, very settled backline spot for a start? I love the backline guys, it's disappointing Egan's not there, all Australian centre half back, but you have a look at that backline, Scarlett, Milburn, Harley. The captain Harley's going to have to play tall with, with Egan out so they're a very good defence. And that forwards, Brian, you being a former 100 goal kicker a season, what do you like? Very, very dangerous when it gets forward. I love Cam Mooney, big games, grand final, the big guys often get the job done, not the midgets in the middle Gary. Cam Mooney <laughs> is the one to have a good look at today and I tell you what, Paul Chapman, Billy, has not played well for a couple of weeks now. He's been fleeting in his, uh, saw, Bill? In his appearances, but I reckon he is set for a big one as well. He is set, don't worry about that. And don't forget Stevie J, of course, Stevie Johnson, ready to turn it on. Of 
out there today. Follow the rundown, Bill. We're not up to Stephen oh, King. Right. <laughs> Stephen <laughs> King, though, Gary, I reckon the big guys in grand finals, I mean, the little midfielders, the good midfielders, yeah. the Gary Ablets and these guys, they get tagged basically out of the game. It's very hard for them to perform at their absolute optimum. And I reckon the big men really go under the radar a bit. Well, which makes the decision to, to bring Stephen King back into the side even more important and significant. This was from the VFL grand final last Sunday. Um, he played for Geelong, of course, against Coburg. Which they won. Thank you, Bill. Um, <laughs> Is that good enough for Bix? I mean, this is a very nice standard VFL footy, but uh, and he played well. I didn't say he dominated. He had Blake there. You've had to unsettle a lineup for the first time. Are you happy with the decision? Well, I'm happy. I don't think he would have made it into the side if Blake was playing good footy, but I think he was a bit shaky against Collingwood, and that's the reason they've had a second look at it. And the fact they're coming up against arguably the uh, the best ruck combination in the league in, in Laid and Brogan, and both of those guys, big, strong bodies, and I think that's why they've gone for King. Bill, what about the whole uh, fabric of the side? Because it's been tight-knit, there hasn't been any issues, no problems, all of a sudden a man come, um, comes out and another one comes in right at the death. Yeah, but Stephen King has been there all year also with the VFL team. They train together. He's been there. He's played 192 games. I was he's say, a former he's... captain. He's a bigger body, and his form's been very good in the VFL. He's been there for 10 years, I feel. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's not an issue, I wouldn't have thought, no. the chemistry with Stephen King. They all know him well enough. He's not a new player coming. They, they've made the right decision yeah. in playing Stephen King because experience and strength is what it's going to be You've all about today. You've got to pick a side, BT to beat the side you play. Yeah. Don't worry about... And oh, Port Adelaide, we know well, how I, good... 5.30 tonight, we'll know whether he made the right decision. Oh, you in hindsight. Oh, well, how, no, how no, good well, are you? There's a lot of pressure on Stephen King. Oh, Is that yeah. the way you used no, to pick the Richmond no, side? No, no, no. <laughs> At the end of the game? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I did change him somewhat, Brian, after that. <laughs> All right, listen. Successful career that was. Goal <laughs> kick. <laughs> Number one. Sorry, old chestnut. Goal kicker, Sparta. Let's get through the well, goal kickers because I think uh, Brian's right. You've got to have blokes that can actually convert the opportunity. Well, Geelong have got uh, a plethora of guys. You've got Mooney, Johnson, Ablett. They've actually got seven guys that have averaged more than the goal a game, and that's super important. Bill, in the in the nineties, look at this. Yourself tap and uh, yeah, that's a magnificent goal there from Stevie Johnson. For yourself and Ablett, you yeah. were the go-to players. Geelong have got seven guys. Throw in Brad Ottens. He's kicked 20 in 21 games as well. It's very hard to defend against BT when you've got that many goal kickers. Absolutely. And who do you man up on? And they are very, very dangerous. A lot of X factor about the Geelong forwards. Well, you have a look at that list there. You just It's hard to defend against. When the ball is contested, Bill, in final yep. pressure, one-on-one, -on -one, there's no go-to player there. That's super for Mark well, Thompson to have. You'd match up on Johnson and uh, Ablett, of course, and Ling and these guys. And last week... Stokes stood up, didn't he, in the first quarter and kicked three goals out of uh, left field. It was great. Cameron Ling also kicking 27 goals as a tagger. Last week, Mick Maltes played him behind the ball, so they need to get him in there as well. well that's uh, significant. Why you talk, spoke about the goal kickers, and I'm going to get you to talk about the, the runners off halfback. I don't know, Brian. <laughs> anyway, we've got the run down around the wrong way. But the runners off halfback, we saw they no, have been what... attacking. They have. They, what they do, Gary, is these guys, two guys in particular to watch, Milburn and Mackey are the two guys. They sit off half back, there's a stoppage so there's a ball up, they sit out about 20 metres, the midfielders of Geelong win the ball, they shovel the ball out. 75% of a Geelong's forward thrust Shit. starting in the back line go through either Mackey or Milburn. Are you sure, Brian? Gary, is these, that right? these, hey, number these, one, you number one, one. You he's can number have, one. You can have all your fairies in the middle, but these are the two <laughs> guys that get it done on the outside, these two guys. That's why it's super important. Port Adelaide, and they're very good at the pressure from defence, blokes like uh, Motlop and Ebert and Pierce, who really put pressure on the opposition teams coming out, I don't think they'll allow them to do that. Don't try and dilute such a strong point. Bix, <laughs> no. what about they throw Laid forward? Oh, hang really on, let's have a look at the Port Adelaide lineup, up oh. Can you not get ahead of yourselves? Who's been running the Sunday footy show in my absence? Well, so, here it is. Yeah, oh, here it is, the Port Adelaide lineup. Uh, one change, Michael Wilson, uh, spiritual leader, gets bandied around a lot, but he is the heart and soul of the Port Adelaide Footy Club. And that is a football tragedy, the fact that he's uh, not in the side. In comes Young Symes, get you to tell us a bit about him, Bix, because this is a side that have got some names in the, in the lineup that we're not overly familiar with. Yeah, look, the blokes like Chaplin and Pettigrew, young players in the fence, have stood up and been fantastic players for them. Symes has played six games this year, hasn't played since round 12. He's a uh, smallest type runner who will probably play half backer on the wing. Uh, look, I just like the evenness of Port Adelaide up forward, much like Geelong. They have uh, plenty of options. Treadray's last two weeks has been very good. Uh, Laid does offer them uh, something tall up there. I'm not sure that Geelong, have, in the absence of Egan, they could be stretched a bit down back. So uh, I, I just think Port are a really good chance. They're on ball brigade, has a defensive side to it in uh, Kane, Corns and, and also Cassisi. So they won't be uh, too unhappy the way they match up on Geelong's on balls. You have to leave the shot up that long to find those Port Adelaide people to get a shot at them in the crowd. <laughs> 
Brogan, Gaz, I look after him at the first bounce. I've just got a feeling he's going to be eyeing off Ottens. If they can get Ottens out of the ruck nice and early, mm. Stephen King's preparation hasn't been great. So look for Brogan early. All right, we spoke about uh, a couple of intangibles and, and the magic of their forward line. Motlop and Ebert, they are two contrasting styles of players. But to Motlop against the Kangaroos, I know it wasn't the most uh, outstanding defence going around at this stage, but he did some things that he just shouldn't be doing in a preliminary final. Yeah, look, he's very clever and he does provide that X factor, much like uh, Stevie Johnson uh, for Geelong. But what it is, it's very hard to match up on because, uh, like Brett Ebert, both very strong in the air. They both get off the mark quickly on the lead. So you, you're a bit torn whether you play a taller player on them or whether you play a smaller player on them. And I'm not sure that Geelong have a perfect match up for either of those Who's players. Who's going to play on them, Bix? Those look, two boys. I think Hunt's going to get. Uh, I think. Hunt might get to uh, uh, Who Ebert. will Hunt get, Bix? He, Hunt will get Ebert, and I think Motlop might end up with uh, mm. Harley. <laughs> what about David Roden and Brad Ottens? Two Richmond rejects, of well, course. You're doing your own intros there. Uh, Spud got rid of them there. Oh, and, uh, hey, Billy, but, Billy, take that no, back. No, you do. I know you didn't, Spud. <laughs> take that uh, back, Billy. Brad Ottens, there he is. He, best on ground last week. His best game for the Cats. We need, ne Sorry, the Geelong need another big oh. game from him. Oh. But wee, he can wee, go wee. forward wee, and wee. kick goals. And the very, very important player, Brad Ottens, of course. There's big lady. It's going to be a great battle out. And here's David Roden. What a story this one is, Gaz. Pick yes. number 86. The last player picked. He's like the kid in the kindergarten in the ground. When you pick a side and there's one little one standing there and you go, all right, come over here, Rose. But uh, a very good player, very good clearance player. He runs uh, through the lines and breaks the lines, as they say, and he can kick goals too. He can indeed. I'm going to get a tip from you very, very shortly. But, uh, boys, I mean, Bill keeps telling us he's keeping a lid on it and that he's got it under control. Bix, he walks around and thinks he's the mayor of Geelong. But it all spilled over on Thursday night on the footy show. I'm not sure if you, you, you saw it. Hopefully you did. But... This was Bill on Thursday. <laughs> Have a look at him. Look at him. Just a big, round, big, fat tabby cat. With a beautiful wife, Nikki, there in the, in the audience. <laughs> look at the package there from Bill. There's the dick. I'm not sure the horizontal stripes did you any favours there, Bill. How do you get this thing on? Yes. No, that was you, Bill, which uh, yeah. also get... Whoa, what are you doing? Oh. No, guys, of course, uh, beautifully sponsored today by the Carlton Draft Plastic Cup this breakfast. So uh, thanks to Carlton Draft, very good people there at Foster's. But um, yes. I'm involved in a Carlton Draft... Uh, Plastic Cup race, a $100,000 race on Cox Plate Day, October 27. There will be 80 lucky Carlton Draft winners will run in the big race in these magnificent robes, of course. Uh, and we're having a heat today, believe it or not, at half time in the TAC Are Cup. Are you running? I am running in it, Gaz, so stand by. <laughs> what about your ankle, Bill? Yeah. Uh, the ankle will be right, because I might have a couple of the sponsors' uh, little drops and I'll be <laughs> OK. Nice. But, um, all you have to do is buy a slab of Carlton Draft and all the SMS numbers are there, you just SMS, and you could win $100,000 on Cox Plate Day or just go to www.plasticcup.com.au and have a couple of frothings. <laughs> this, this panel's very well today, guys. Smooth. Very smooth. Seamless. I know it's been a while, Gary, since you've uh, seen Tony, but what do you think of his makeover? He's had the new uh, bit of hair put on there and uh, the chompers. Slim, <laughs> Slim about man. 15 kilo. Yeah, well, yep, yep. Donated all my excess body fat to Brian. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you're looking good, Tony. Thanks very much. And you were very, very sharp this morning, you boys. Would you please thank... We might get a tip first, well, well, actually. Can you not come over and take over the whole section until oh, we get the tip? We'll be there tomorrow, Tony. Just relax. Yeah. <laughs> this is Gary's turn. Bill, let's give me a tip on a Norm Smith medalist, please. Uh, the best team will win, and the team that's won 18 from come 19 on. games, the Geelong Football Club, and Norm Smith will be Joel Corey. All right. Next. I think it's going to be... Unfortunately, it's going to be heartbreak for Geelong supporters oh, again no. this year. Port Adelaide to win by under a goal. Oh. <laughs> and Dominic Cassisi to be the Norm Smith medalist. Bud. Geelong going to win, guys, and the Norm Smith medalist will be the best player on the ground. You're unreal. Oh, Spud. Spud can't uh, tell us because well, I'll give you an exclusive. He oh, is yeah. voting on the Norm the Smith chairman. medal. Chairman. The chairman. The chairman. The deciding vote. Too, what do you do? Also. You just add the votes up. How just have a look at the game, Brian, and see who <laughs> plays well, and then 3-2-1, uh, mate. What about Fantastic. you, number one Look, I think the, the uh, Cats will win, uh, Gary, because they are clearly the best side. If they play in any other capacity, they will win the game. And I think the Norm Smith medalists, I really like Cam Moody. I reckon he's set for four or five.
five goals. All right, Tone, I think the Cats are going to win. Matthew Scarlett will win the Norm Smith medal and we won't see Bill for three years at the end. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and for what it's worth, I, I think uh, Geelong will win also. Well, it's not worth much, Tony. <laughs> All right, would you please thank the first of our panels, Billy Brownless, Mark Thanks, Bickley, thanks. Gary Lyon, Brian Taylor and Danny Crawley. We'll take a break on the Channel 9 Grand Final Breakfast when we come back. Some very, very good friends of this very program. Some marvellous scenes there from the city of Melbourne yesterday. It was the traditional grand final parade with both Geelong and Port Adelaide supporters lining the streets. It really was fantastic and, as we say, a football tradition. So is this. It is a tradition here at the Channel 9 grand final breakfast show that these two guys come along. We absolutely love them. Rusty and John, they are the scared weird little guys. Songs from the two teams. Absolutely. We are Geelong, the greatest team of all, the greatest, except we haven't won for 40 years. The premiership is in the bag, the champagne has been poured. It's as secure as a job with Ford. We'll go and do our best to win the flag and get rid of our hands. Actually, I'm kind of used to the handbag now. It goes well with your socks. We are the cats, we'll rub against your legs. But if we don't like you, we'll piss on your doona. <laughs> Other teams have had trouble with players taking tablets. They've also had trouble with our ablets. If we lose, we'll say a word that starts with F and rhymes with Cardinia Park. Cardinia Park, yeah, that's right. Now for the power. We've got the power to win, the power to rule, and if the power runs out, we've brought some batteries. Our members' average IQ is about 32, and they slept in the car somewhere Horsham. Geelong will smoke, smoke, smoke unless we choke, choke, choke. Or Mark Williams' wife has another baby. Our aggression is real. We dress in silver and teal in the true Port Adelaide tradition. We're gonna win, win, win unless we lose, lose, lose. No, we might turn Draw, draw, draw. Our supporters cheer loud. We'll make Adelaide proud. Except that most of Adelaide hates us. And that's why we have them back every year. They are the scared weird little guys. Rusty and John. Uh, sensational. Now, it is another tradition, of course, that we get your tip for today. Storm for me. Right. <laughs> yes, on behalf of all South Australians, go Cats! Go Cats! <laughs> <laughs> all right, terrific. Give them another round of applause. Rusty and John, they are the scared weird little guys. Well, we do have a sprinkling of celebrities through the audience here, and uh, I've got to say, the room looks absolutely sensational. 1,300 people have crammed in here today, so thank you very much. And one young lady you might recognise, she uh, did a starring performance on A Current Affair through the week, on Monday night, I think it was, and she was on the arm of Gary Ablett Jr. at the Brownlow Medal on the red carpet. Please welcome Lauren Phillips. <laughs> Hello, Lauren. I'm good, thank you. Well, this is, uh, well, we're going to get the goss on Gary in just a tick, but uh, what, what was the red carpet like for you? Because you looked absolutely stunning as you and Gary made your way up. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was good. It was um, a bit of a quick dash for us. We were running a bit late because the boys had training, so they've been a bit more focused on today than, than the Brownlow. So it was a very quick run up the red carpet, but we got there. All right, now we can see what you're wearing. Uh, was, it, was it hard to actually pick that dress? Did Gary have any say in it? 
No, he didn't at all. I think um, he saw it on the night and liked it, so we're on a winner. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, we'll get on a Yes, he is one of the superstars of the game, that's for sure, and he's got three premiership medallions to prove it. Would you please make welcome to Channel 9's grand final breakfast from the Brisbane Lions, Jonathan Brown. Well, Jonathan, first of all, uh, thanks for coming along, and it's a, it's a day that is synonymous with you personally, but uh, always, uh, well, uh, can I just ask first of all, I would assume you were going for Geelong. Well, yeah, I am a Western District boy, obviously, yeah. and uh, I'm going for, I'm never a big fan of Geelong when I was a kid, but uh, I just think they've been clearly the best side all season, um, so I hope they win. I, I only ask that because that is very close to a Port Adelaide tie you've got on there. Yes, yeah, well. <laughs> Well, geez, I, uh, I never barrack for uh, Port Adelaide. They're similar, similar to Collingwood. You either love, love them or you hate them. So uh, they beat us in 2004, mate. Uh, I'll be going for Geelong today. How do you... How do you uh, that's good. I'm pleased about that. How do you separate your three premierships? Is there one that stands out more than the others? Well, the first one, I was only 19 years old, so I was uh, only two years before you sitting at home in, uh, in Warrnambool watching, uh, watching the excitement unfold. Two years later, uh, winning the flag, so that one was excitement. Second one was probably uh, relief because we were about dollar and five favourites to beat Collingwood, only just got over the line. Um, and then the third one was just... Probably the third one was the most special one because we had so many injuries. Obviously, Nigel Lappin played with uh, two broken ribs and a punctured lung, and, and Vossi's knee was uh, about to amputated, so it was a, uh, yeah, they, they all had different feelings, but the first one, just for the raw emotion, was sensational. And how, how would the players be feeling this morning? I mean, you, yeah. you obviously wake up and try and put it out of your yeah. mind and act as if it's another day, but it, clearly it's not. Well, Lee Matthews always talks about, and I think he sums up very well, that uh, you want to be there, but you don't want to be there. And uh, we'd... Uh, we all hate that feeling when you're sitting in your room. It's not so much breakfast, we're going to eat breakfast and all that, but when you have to go back to your room and get dressed, it's that, that really uh, bad feeling. You feel like you want to uh, have a bark in the toilets, you know what I mean? You're starting to say you're pretty nervous and uh, you think, geez, this is the last place I want to be in the world at the moment. But when you're not there and you look back like, oh, I'd love to be there today, and you think, geez, I'd love to be there experiencing that feeling. And uh, because very few times in your career you get to do it, but uh, I suppose early in my career it was like the norm. But uh, it, it's not the norm as I've realised the last three years. So what, what about today? How do, you, how do you spend the day today? Well, you just, just get to the ground and uh, try and get involved. One of the hard things actually, uh, these days we warm up on the ground about 45 minutes before the, uh, mm. the game starts, but grand final day because of all the pre-game entertainment, you actually have to warm up about an hour and a half before the game. So we have to do two warm-ups. Um, we used to go there, just get a bit of a loosen up an hour and a half before the game, and then we'd have to do a more extensive warm-up in the rooms, which which was a little bit odd. Mm. Uh, but the other team has to do exactly the same thing. So uh, you just got to make adjustments, and at the end of the day, you just wrap your play in the grand final. Very e eerie feeling, obviously. I remember the first one uh, tying up the boots. It just it felt like there was no one there, and you hear the door open, and I think in, in, in excess were playing, and you'd hear them roaring down the tunnel, and the door had shut, and it was just, mm. well, it was just you and uh, 21 other mates. But... Uh, Unbelievable feeling. All right, now, uh, footy season's almost over. You'd be really looking forward to the cricket season because we know you are a, a bit of a cricket aficionado because we saw that on the footy show, you bowling to Ricky Ponting. Oh, <laughs> that was a good impersonation, Murph Hughes, eh? <laughs> well, actually, uh, I've just come off a, uh, a fracture of the pelvis, actually, and that's the first time I'd... Uh, I'd bowled for about 18 months, but I was in the ad break and I was bowling to Bally, the floor manager. Bally's floating around and uh, I'll give Bally a bit of a lick around the, uh, around the chop. So I thought, well, I reckon <laughs> I, if I can get Bally uh, jumping around, I reckon I might be able to get punted. But I thought, too good of a chance. I've got the Australian career captain here. He said, oh, I, haven't, I haven't picked up the bat for three months, Brandon. Just make sure you put it on a nice length. I said, no worries, punter. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What about uh, Brownlow Medal Night? We saw you on the red carpet and uh, you were one of many footballers, I've got to say, who was just about upstaged by your partner. She looks sensational. 
Yeah, she done a good job, Cole. She, uh, I remember, uh, <laughs> I remember she uh, showed up at home about two weeks ago with that dress, and uh, she, she's a beauty therapist, so they hate sunbaking, so she gets the old spray tan going, and uh, she come home, and without the spray tan, mate, it was just there was a little bit too much skin showing, so I was a bit worried, and uh, I said, you better ring me mum, and uh, if you get the clearance from me mum, I reckon you're at half a chance. And, uh, <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, so uh, Mary. Mary gave her the thumbs up, so I thought she'd be a, uh, uh, she'd be a good chance, so she'd done a good job. No, she's got a wonderful life ahead of her, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> Jonathan, uh, all the very best. Thanks for coming along and enjoy Thanks the day. No worries. And Thanks good luck for next season. Would you please thank Jonathan Brown? As we say, uh, it really is one of the game's greats, isn't he, at such a young age. All right, let's head back out to the MCG now, where Chris Jones is standing by. Chris, uh, well, we spoke about the weather earlier and the fact that the Bureau was tipping a, a pretty murky sort of a day, but it looks like a bit of sunshine there at the minute. Yeah, there is at the moment. When we arrived at about 7 o'clock this morning, Tony, it was bright sunshine everywhere, hardly a cloud in the sky, and there was no wind, but it has clouded over quite a bit in the last hour or so, and there has been a wind that's picked up but as you know when you get inside the MCG it's really swirly so I don't think it'll give any team too big of an advantage when we bounce the footy down. It, uh, it appears that most of the people have already made their way into the ground. No, we can't see those queues there. Any, anyone still trying to snaffle a ticket? Well, there are plenty of people walking around the ground trying to snaffle a ticket. I'll tell you, here's a surprise. There's still 3,000 tickets available for full members in the MCC on the top deck. So if you are a full member and you want to come down here, you're still going to get into the ground, which is a fair bit of a surprise after everything that we went through last week. But when we got here this morning, the crowds are absolutely fantastic. There was a real buzz. The guys have been camping out. I don't think too many people had had much sleep, but there was probably about around 10 or 15,000 here this morning. and Everyone was in a jovial mood, and I think everyone's pretty excited about the Cats' chances today. All right, Chris, thanks for your time. We might check in with you a little later on. Give him a round of applause. Chris Jones there for us at the MCG. All right, we'll take a break on Channel 9's Grand Final Breakfast. As we go to that break, uh, some of the biggest names uh, gave it away this year, and it is really a cavalcade of champions who will be farewelling football at the MCG this afternoon. This one, Sam? Well, so I, I'm not sure, to be honest. Shane Parker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
so niggy. You should know say? every single play and every single jump. You've seen this bike before. No. <laughs> Jess, you've become a star. Yes, he certainly has become a star, and uh, we just threw the budget right out the window to get him here this morning. One of the biggest names in football at the moment, and one of the littlest men, too, I've got to say. Please make welcome Jesse Dart. <laughs> How are you, Jess? Very good. This is a very, very exciting day, isn't it? Yes, it's been very exciting all the day. Um, it's just been a big rush. The taxi didn't know where the Crown Canadian was, so <laughs> it took a bit late at the time. You didn't get his name by chance, did you, Jess? But uh, probably got an idea. Um, Jesse, um, what's uh, a big game today? Geelong versus? Port Adelaide. What's your tip and why will they win? Geelong. They've played outstanding for me this year, and they just deserve their chance. Because Port got in 2004, which I think now can only deserve a premiership. Yeah, 44 years ago, 44 years ago, before your mum and dad were born, probably. Um, but we want to see... Before my mum was born, not my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, what about what's happening over there? You're a Frio supporter. Are you happy with Mark Harvey's appointment as coach? Yes, I'm very happy. What will he, what will he bring to the team? Obviously, uh, a lot more victories. Yes, something special for this year uh, since Chris Connolly was, was gone. Two losses in those whole in those games. Pretty good. Yeah, and you're, you're off to the MCG for the big one today, are you? Yep. Very, very exciting. Yes. I hope you get a taxi driver who knows where the MCG is. Yes, I think all taxi drivers know where the MCG is. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be so sure about that, Jess. Um... <laughs> anyway, mate, uh, you have a great day and uh, thanks for being on our big breakfast program. And uh, I, you're just a celebrity now, aren't you? Well, it just turns out that way, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, Jess. He's absolutely delightful, is Jesse Dark. I tell you, it is, uh, it is uh, with a great privilege today, and uh, the first time we've got him on this breakfast. We've tried year in, year out, and we just couldn't get this fellow, but we've got him this year, and I know that everyone in the room here and everyone at home will be wrapped. He is synonymous with September. He is synonymous with football in general. Would you please make welcome to sing a song from his new album, Country to Country. It's called Friendly Fire. The one, the only, Mike Brady! You're the best love that I've had But sometimes, baby, how you drive me mad You've got everything that I need But I don't know where this thing's gonna lead I just want you to know That whatever happens, I won't let you go But you cut me down with your friendly fire Straight to the heart like a razor wire Don't know how much it hurts when you do what you do But little by little, you cut me in two I'm not quite sure you're aware But sometimes, lady, you can be so unfair I think that you know you're the one when you do all the things that I love to have done I just want you to know That whatever happens I won't let you go But you cut me down with your friendly fire Straight to the heart like a razor wire Don't know how much it hurts when you do what you do But little by little you cut me in two You cut me in two I need you in my life It cuts me like a knife I wanna be with you What more can I do? But you cut me down with your friendly fire 
Straight to the heart like a razor wire Don't know how much it hurts when you do what you do But little by little you cut me in two But you cut me down with your friendly fire Straight through the heart like a razor wire Don't know how much it hurts when you do what you do A little by little, you cut me in two I said a little by little, you cut me in two I said a little by little, you cut me in two Wonderful stuff, Mike Brady there with uh, track from his new album, Country to Country. Uh, that, no, 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 my friend Michael. <laughs> surely, surely not. You, know, you can't leave this stage without giving us... Look, we all love Kazali, don't we? We love Kazali. We love Kazali. But I've got the cast... I don't want you to do Kazali, because I just reckon one day in September says it all on grand final day, does it not? Thank you, Tony. I'll make you a deal. If you do one day in September, we'll sing along with you. Fantastic. That's Ladies great. and gentlemen, Mike Ray! Well, we put a lot in and we worked real hard. There are days where we try, days where we start trying to please the crowds when they're unforgiving. There are easier ways to make a living. We've come a long way since the start of things. We've seen the joy that hard work brings. He made us cry and he made us smile. We've hit the front, now it's all worthwhile. Here we go! Cause there's one day in September we want to remember. There isn't any doubting. We'll be there shouting for all such a part of this whole town. She won't let us down Well, there's nothing better than a nice good win There's no second prize if you let them in You've got to give your best and then give again Out there there's no such thing as friends We've been our best and we've been our worst If we do it right, we'll come home first We've got to get in there and make them sad Hit them hard and take the flag Cause there's one day in September We want to win There isn't any doubting We'll be there shouting For all such a part of this whole town And we know that you won't let us down One more time, here we go Cause there's one day in September Town. And we know that you won't let us down. Thank you. Mike Brady! Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Good on you, Mike. It certainly wouldn't be a grand final day if we didn't have Mike Brady here. And it is the anthem for football today, that's for sure, and uh, it's great to have him along. Folks, uh, I think the Port Adelaide players are uh, up and about and just making their way outside and soaking up some of the weather that we've turned on for them. Uh, Michael Roberts is standing by. Michael, what can you tell us? Hello, Tony. I can hardly hear myself because there's Geelong people, Port Adelaide people. I'm in amongst the two hotels. The Crown Plaza, the Port Adelaide people, the guys, they came out. Actually, we were the only ones down here. Quite remarkable. It was like a family day. They did a couple of laps, and then they pinged the footy around. This, look, Mark Williams said to me, they've had enough talking, they've, they just want to rub shoulders, they've had breakfast, they're just starting to focus on what they have to do, what the team has to do. They're just, there's a quiet confidence about them, and they just pinged the footies around. It was very relaxed, and I tell you what, they have backed themselves big time. Speaking to Mark Williams, I said, just give me a little little good one, a little quote. He said, I'll give you one. So he just walked over and he said, it's like championship tennis, serving 5-4 Geelong novices. They can't make it. 
a lot of people fall the other way. So that is his, that's how confident Mark Williams is. It is, uh, it, it is fantastic down here to think that the Port Adelaide blokes they haven't won since, won since 2004. They are quite conf quietly confident. They can ping the ball around. They've gone back in for a team meeting and they are on. They'll go to the G and they want this flag. All right, terrific stuff, Michael. Thanks very much for that. And uh, boy, Choco just looks as cool as a cucumber, doesn't he? Give him a round of applause. Michael Roberts down there. We're going to take a break right here on Channel 9's Grand Final Breakfast. Still to come on Nine's Grand Final Breakfast, Vanessa Amorosi takes centre stage. Ard Barker delivers an American's view on our favourite game. The winner of the The second of our stars of the panels cast their eyes over this afternoon's long-awaited clash. Plus, Geelong legend Sam Newman gives us his thoughts as only Sam can. That's all coming up on Nine's Grand Final Breakfast. Proudly brought to you by the Carlton Draft Plastic Cup. Yes, welcome back to the Crown Palladium for Channel 9's Grand Final Breakfast. Proudly brought to you by Carlton Draft, the Plastic Cup. Looking forward to that on Cox Plate Day. Looking forward to our next guest also. When he played, he was one of the biggest names in the game. When he retired, he became even bigger. And it's with great pleasure that we have him here this morning. The 300 gamer for Geelong. He was captain in 74-75. Please make welcome Sam Newman. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very nice to be here. Well, Sam, uh, I know that you wouldn't have missed it for the world. Uh, here? Yeah. No, we're told to come. That's what we do when you're, in, <laughs> when you're an employee, Tony. Mm. When they say jump, you say... How high? That's correct. And, uh, well, Geelong today. I mean, everyone's on a high. You'd be on a high, surely. I mean, being Geelong... I know that you, you, you are very, very critical of the Cats, but uh, not too deep down. You're a passionate Geelong man still. Uh, well, now, Tony, I'm critical of the Cats or any other side when they play... Um, unproductive football, which they've done for the last couple of years. But we don't want to Dwell devalue this mm. day. They've uh, done a bit of soul searching at the start of the year and found that the football they were playing is not conducive to winning games or premierships. And full credit to the coach and the people playing in that side that they've had the presence of mind to adapt to a more sensible game of football and the rest is history as they say because that's why they're playing in a grand final. Well, you talk about a more sensible game of football. Let's go back to 1963 and, uh, well, common sense just went out the window there. What the hell was happening with the accordion player in the rooms beforehand? Yep. This is the grand final, Sam. Yep. Yeah, Happy Hammond. Uh, you remember Happy Hammond? He used to... <laughs> there he is. That was Happy Hammond there. And uh, playing the accordion, Freddie Wooler. Uh, Hap used to play the accordion and lead the ball uh, boys onto the ground and there's the greatest player ever to have played the game, uh, Graham Farmer. Yeah, who unfortunately, uh, because of his age, couldn't make it over for the game today. Couldn't he? No. Look, how old is he? 74, I think. Oh, yeah, because once you get over 70 or so, you're just about stuffed, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> so I guess you won't be going to Perth anymore, sir? No, Sam? that's about me, yep. Yeah. Now, what about, uh, unfortunately, uh, 1967, Geelong played in the grand final again, but uh, you'd suffered that horrendous injury at that stage and was ruled out? Uh, I ruled out. I'd ruled myself in, but I was in hospital in a coma. So um, uh, they thought probably even I couldn't play uh, in a coma. Well, mind you, Shane Crawford has played in a coma for the last five years. <laughs> uh, so it just shows you it can be done. What, why has Geelong turned it around? I mean, there's been so much heartbreak since 1963. Why have they turned well, it around? Well, I don't know about since 63 how they've turned it around, but in the last two or three years, like most of the competition, they lost track of what wins football games. Mm. And uh, when you look at teams like the Swans, who have been reasonably successful but have uh, taken the game to a whole different... It was never designed to be played the way most clubs play it. Swans play about 10 minutes of football the rest of the quarter. They hang onto the ball and wait for the umpire to say play on. Now, I don't know if any of you have played football, but if you play forward of the centre, that ain't the way to play football. And I'll say this again, Geelong, to their great credit, played like 95% of the rest of the competition. And this year, as a result of changing the way they've played, and people, commentators, whether they be parochial or doing their job objectively, 
have singled this out as the reason why they haven't been successful. And now they've changed. They are successful. So I ask you, who has been right and who has been wrong? All right. Now, I ask you this. Uh, have you, have you, I know that you had the kidney injury, had it taken out. Uh, how courageous was Tom Lonigan last weekend in the VFL Grand Final when he came back and played? Tom Lonigan, who had that horrendous injury, had the kidney out and came back and played in the VFL Premiership last week. Well, as an added bonus, Tom's here this morning. Tom Lonigan, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, Tom. Good. You just uh, we might do a, uh, stay there. That uh, that's a good match up. Uh, now uh, let's talk about first of all the injury. Obviously you're back on track. Everything's a OK. Yeah. And uh, six, seven goals last week in the VFL Grand Final. Well done. Yeah, six goals last week was um, good for the boys to have a win. And um, I'm just thrilled to be back out there playing. And uh, yeah, I'm just stoked to be alive. I guess it's great. Sam, you would have been absolutely wrapped, wouldn't you, to see him? I'm stoked to be alive too. <laughs> <laughs> just a different reason than Tom. Uh, uh, look. Uh, you say is it courageous? Now I've had a couple of chats to Tom uh, when it happened and since, and it's just a uh, state of mind. If Tom thinks that this is what he should be doing, no one should give him any advice. I've made sure I didn't give him any advice. Just so you weigh it up yourself. His doctors will tell him not to play because they are on the side of caution. That's their responsibility. But I'm sure Tom has made the right decision. There's a very, very small chance it'll happen again, but there's a very small chance in life that anything will happen, Tony. So it's only life we're talking about. Well, it's Tom's life, and he's still pretty young, Sam, and uh, you've still got a lot, of, a lot of football ahead of you. Uh, obviously, you would have been elated to have run out there today, but circumstances prevented that. Um, what, what are you going to do for the day? Um, yeah, I'm going back to the hotel and staying at the Grand Hyatt, which is nice, and then uh, head off to the ground later on today. And, um, I'm really looking forward to getting in the rooms before the, um, before the game and seeing how the boys are and getting behind them and yeah, hopefully spurring them on for a win. Have you spoken to any of the boys this morning? Uh, not today. I spoke to a few yesterday um, after the parade and um, they're all pretty excited and they were thrilled with yesterday how it all went and uh, really looking forward to today. Have you spoken to the unfortunate Mark Blake? Yeah, I've spoken to Blake. I spoke, spoke to him on uh, Friday. Um, and he's he's holding um, himself like he's yeah he's really well and uh, he's a he's a good young kid he's got a really bright future and um, you know he's 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 a big factor of how we've gone this year he's he's playing he's played 22 games and um, he's got a bright future ahead. And for the first time you came back and played after the injury, was there any time at all where you felt no I shouldn't get in front of this pack I'm reticent or did you just take it out of your mind? Uh, I guess you think about it a bit, Sammy. I mean, um, you can't get something like that happen. You can't just wipe it from your memory. So, you know, I guess you sort of take a little bit of precaution. But, you know, um, mainly I've just gone out there and played, played on instinct footy. And, um, you know, I, I just back my instincts. And I guess if there was the same thing to do it again, I'd, I'd hope that I would do it again. All right, let's talk about last Sunday. Just terrific for you personally to actually walk away with a Premiership medal, albeit at VFL level, Tom. Yeah, no, as, as I said before, I was uh, absolutely stoked. And for the group of guys we got in the VFL, um, there's a lot of guys that maybe could have played uh, AFL footy at different clubs, but we had our own little um, group together and yeah. we're all hoping for success and we're glad we got it. All right, today's grand final, you're obviously both going for Geelong. I assume you are, Sam? Well, I'm not going for Geelong because I played for them or I'm a supporter of theirs. I'm going for Geelong because logically I think they'll win because they're the best side playing today. Yeah. By how much? Uh, no good being a commentator like most other people and just backing the side for people who want to hear why you back sides. I wouldn't hesitate to back against Geelong, if not back against them, tip against them, if I didn't think they'd win. All right. Tom, by how much? Oh, hopefully six goals would be nice. Yeah, but goal and uh, a half a quarter. Geelong are a goal and a half a quarter. A better side than uh, the power, in my opinion, that adds up to six goals. All right, terrific. Well, Tom, great to see you back on the field. Well done for last Sunday. Sam, great to have you here. Thank you very much. Albeit under sufferance. And um, uh, we're going to take a break, so stay with us as we go to the break now. Would you please thank Tom Lonigan and Sam Newman. Thank you.
McVeigh the fumble. Not so far in the opposite direction. McVeigh did well. Scrambles after the ball deep in the pocket. What a goal! Another back to secure that. He's going to Dustin. He's got the tall. He's got plenty of carry. It's going. It's going. It's gone. This is up for David. He uses pace. He moves. Gets there, does he? No, he can't. David runs the tackle. David runs the 40. David kicks. They score. Oh, that's the scores against. Inside 50. G. Hedlund had that and then left it behind. Into the pocket. Goes with the check side, banana. Oh, that would it. be a miracle goal. It is one of the goals of the year. Here's a chance for Revolt to Jackson. Oh, oh he's got it. Oh, he's in front. McPhee, he's one of those attacking players. He took it out. Oh, the umpire didn't call it. We had the angle on it. McVeigh. Oh, what a super goal. is running. Newman is going long with a massive, massive, massive route. Oh, 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 oh my goodness. Outside 50. Motlop with the outside of the foot. I mentioned the big bag of tricks. That was from the bottom. <laughs> Gets it to Pierce. Sold the dummy as well. Sold another. Down to oh. another. Daniel Pierce runs inside 50 from a tight angle. We have a candidate for goal of the year. Goes to one knee. Hamlet's got it. Fans away through. That's a goal. To Logan Flint. He would take his best from 52. It's long. Lloyd's down there. Gathers. Oh. He's on. He's on. That is the goal of the year. There's been none better than that. Rock of the target. Scarlet. Didac. Still with Didac. Oh, yes. Of course. Oh. He is special, that boy. Yes, welcome back to Channel 9's Grand Final Breakfast with thanks to the Carlton Draft Plastic Cup. Looking forward to that on Cox Plate Day. Well, there they were, the goals of the year. Alan Didak should have got it, but the judges gave it to Matthew Lloyd for that little backward kick, and uh, a worthy winner he was indeed. OK, the second of our star-studded panels now, and it is an absolute ripper. Would you please make welcome, starting from the end, Brownlow medalist Shane Crawford. Dual Premiership player with the Kangaroos, Wayne Carey. One of the biggest names in the football media and a man while living in Adelaide once drove through Port Adelaide by mistake, James Brayshaw. Five-time Premiership hero, Dermot Brereton. And Collingwood star Shane Wakelin with a bit of a vested interest in today's game. He'll tell us why in just a tick. Welcome to you, Shane. Anytime. Got about uh, nine hours sleep total between us until we get to Shane just at the end. But I'm going to start with this Shane. Big week for you, Croft. And uh, Thursday night, about 800,000 Melbournians tuned into the grand final footy show to see you make an idiot of yourself again. Talk us through this. Yeah, no, I, uh, I love getting my gear off and um, I haven't been doing it much lately, so I've got <laughs> any chance to uh, rip the gear off. But it's, it's a great night. I think uh, people who watch your show would have. Uh, had, it was that. <laughs> there was a lot of entertainment on for the night, so it was, it, as you can see, yeah, the, uh, it's meant to be showering rain, as you can see. And, yeah, no, I've got a few issues. <laughs> why, why don't you tell the people, Crawford, you should tell the people that most of the guys, when they go, go to teach the, the footballers how to dance, you get a, a schedule and you get to go Monday, Wednesday and Friday, the week before, at 4pm for about 30 minutes. Croft pulls out these diary and goes, I can come Tuesday at 10, uh, Tuesday at 3 o'clock, Wednesday. He goes about 15 times. He just loves it. He gives it the best run of all time. Well, that's probably why uh, I've played more games than you, Dermot, is because it's all about preparation. <laughs> it's all about preparation and, uh, you know, being dedicated and really working towards a passion. And yeah. obviously getting my gear off is a passion. So. <laughs> well, Duck, now that you're part of the Nine Stable, can you see yourself getting your rig off for the footy show for uh, next year's player review? Uh, no, if I had a body like Crofts, I probably would, but I haven't. So, uh, I'll leave it on. Now, Derm, last time these two yeah, clubs James. met down at... Uh, skilled Stadium, 
Port Adelaide got the chocolates. What do you think? Well, they were very good that day. They have the ability on a bigger ground too, I think, to separate Geelong. During the week, because Geelong have been the best team of the uh, comp this year and duly deserved the uh, top billing, but as you, I've read into it as the week goes on, I've just swung to Port Adelaide. They have a game plan. There's two teams that have a game plan uh, that Geelong don't like to uh, come up against, and obviously Port Adelaide being one of them. They just tend to separate the opposition. They don't give Geelong a chance to peel off and make the extra number around the contest, especially when the ball goes through the air. And once they get it, they have great pace. And Geelong, apart from Gary Ablett breaking the lines in the middle, they're not slow, but they don't have great pace. Port Adelaide have blistering pace. Wakes, as much as we all think we know what we're talking about, you've actually played against these two mobs this year. What do you think? Yeah, spot on, Derm. Look, uh, the key is to dismantle their back line. Look, they, they obviously love playing as a back six together. And uh, if you can get Milburn outside 50, get a lead-up player on him, that's the key to dismantling from, for a start. And then you don't want Massey and Enright dropping off and taking those uncontested mark inside uh, 50. We'd prefer you just disagree with Dermot no matter what he says, Wakes, just for the rest of our sake. Uh, Duck, what about the, uh, the big night Monday night? Jimmy Bartell, Gary Ablett, it was a huge night for the Geelong Footy Club. Oh, look, it was a huge night. I think that uh, it, was a, it was a worthy winner. Uh, had, the, uh, had the Brownlow won with uh, two games to go, obviously missed the last two rounds. He was, uh, he was brilliant. He had a brilliant year. He's uh, everything that a uh, Brownlow medalist should be. He was humble. I thought uh, just the way he went about it. His year was exceptional. He, uh, he's hard at it. He wins the hard ball. And uh, he's a big key today. If he, can, uh, if he can have a big game along with uh, Gary Ablett and uh, the rest of their stars, Obviously, I think it'll go a long way to, uh, to the Cats winning the flag. And let's have a look at the class of 2001 that uh, polled exceptionally well during the uh, evening. Luke Hodge, he was taken at number one. Uh, he got 16 votes. Was he probably the only one of those uh, midfield players who has the ability, besides Gary Ablett, to go forward or back? So he, uh, he's kind of universal in that regard. But when you look at the midfielders that came out of that draft, that is an absolute cracker, that, uh, that haul. Well, it's a midfielder's award now, Derm. The fact that the man sitting on my left never won one, does that mean that a power forward will never win the Brownlow? Well, I think, it, really, if you look at the competition right now, you say, who are the two best players in it? And I think most people would say, it's Chris Judd and it's Jonathan Brown. That's yep. the way they go. And Brown's a key, uh, key position player. And you look down the list there, and he doesn't feature in the top six or seven. So, but I reckon if you were putting... 670 players on the open market and you list them for price-wise, I think Brown would be first or second cab off the rank in a wage. Where would this bloke uh, come in, Croft? We're just going to show some vision of a grand final played last weekend and just want you to give us some idea of, uh, you know, if there was open market where uh, this bloke here <laughs> would feature. <laughs> See if you can pick him up, ladies and gentlemen. This is, uh, this is Dermot Brereton last weekend. <laughs> Jeez, that's a fair set of guts on it. <laughs> what about the guts? Did you kick that, that was a goal too. He oh. gave it a point. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, now this is the world's best shank. Oh. <laughs> oh. It must have been windy, very windy. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> pull up all right. If only. Did you if win? only I had to put the preparation into that game that you do into your dancing well, call. You go. I might have got a few touches. <laughs> Did we win? We got. Pizzled. <laughs> as long as you had fun. Now, uh, <laughs> this time three years ago was a big uh, weekend wakes for the Wakeland family. We've got some vision here of the very emotional scenes after Port Adelaide won their first ever flag. There's the brother. Uh, the brother was what I was trying to say then. Uh, three, <laughs> getting the silverware around the neck, which was fantastic. And you were in the crowd. Tell us how this all went. Yeah, look, it was a massive day, obviously. Um, I've obviously been on the receiving end of the Brisbane sides in... Uh, 02 and 03 and to sit back and watch Darrell receive a premiership in Dalian was uh, obviously a massive thrill for our family and um, obviously the emotions flowed over and it was a sensational day for him. How are they feeling do you reckon amongst the Port Adelaide group? They're, they're quietly confident. Yeah look they've, they've come from a position at the start of the year where they would have been comfortable with a reasonable amount of improvement within the group and I think they've outperformed everyone's expectations and uh, they go in with quite a relaxed mindset. On public transport, 
here today. It got yeah. you all the way to the door, Wakes. Absolutely, Dan. Yeah. Got the court Connex in today, which is a uh, magnificent public transport company. And, uh, <laughs> and then walked down from Flinders Street Station, so it's been quite a relaxing so morning. How, oh, well can, done, how can he catch Connex and be on time and you drive in here and be late? <laughs> now, Doug, I want to ask you about the uh, week from Geelong's point of view. They've been criticised for going out of their normal routine, for not putting players up, uh, for the media, for being you know, very precious at their last training session. Have they gone about it the wrong way, you think? Oh, look, you, you try to uh, keep things as normal as possible during grand final week. I think the fact that they've, uh, they've probably held players back for a good reason. There are a lot more things that they have to do during that week. So although you think they've been held back because there's a lot more to do, they've probably done just as much or more than ever. So no, I think they've done the right thing. Let's hope... Uh, I mean, none of that matters at uh, 2.30 today. I mean, they go out there and uh, that's all forgotten. But I, I'm going for the Cats, mate. I, I, hope, uh, I just hope that uh, they have done the right thing during the week and can get over the line. Well, Croft, what's the key for uh, Geelong today? What, you've had a good look at this one. I, I think the key is... Uh, there's definitely one guy who's going to be instrumental today. I think uh, you've got to be physical and, and hard at the ball and, uh, and really just play with great confidence. Um, there's one guy, I don't know if we're going to look at some footage. Yep. I think he's... Uh, they're just going to, they're going to play with that aggression. If they can take that aggression, I just can't see them losing. There you go, take that. <laughs> so if they can slap them around a bit, uh, I'm sure. I'm, I'm pretty sure they can get across the line. Very, very important. It's a beautiful... Oh. Hey, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> what is all that about? <laughs> Hello, but, oh, it's just uh, sorry, Jim. Beg your oh, pardon. No, it's just getting it. changed. What's all that about? Stupid? No, I just said. <laughs> I just said you've got to be physical, like you used to be. Well, at least I waited till we'd won the game rather than a quarter in you belted someone, knowing that Hawthorne went had three quarters to play and couldn't. <laughs> what was that about, Shane? No, 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 no. Oh, seriously, I was We're actually a lucky to have Shane here. Like... Uh, <laughs> going to go over to America and be an astronaut. School principal rang up the little state school he went to and said to his mum, get him out, he's taking up space. And oh. um, <laughs> now I bought you a drink, Shane. <laughs> Do you want a drink? <laughs> um, <laughs> better on me. Right. No, but I was oh. being serious. Uh, 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 no good can come from this. Samuel, <laughs> stay with us because we've... <laughs> I'll be uh, just in the wings waiting for any other right. cheap shots. As James, as I was saying, like the, the, whole, the whole idea with that footage is when you used to play back in 1826, <laughs> you have to be aggressive. And, and Duck knows that to win a grand final, and Dermot, who is very aggressive as well. And I just thought that was a perfect example. Well, slap. We didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Better to hit someone when they're on their knees, Shane, because they don't have far to fall. You can't <laughs> risk yourself toppling. <laughs> so he was already down, so oh. I thought, what's the hell? <laughs> You've got some other... You're already down, uh, Shane, so just be careful. Got Push some other you. highlights uh, of the great <laughs> Sam Newman that you had, you brought I in for us today. Collingwood were making uh, suits now. There you go, with this, Sammy. Look at this. There you are. Look at this, Sam. Oh, the drop oh, kick. Yeah. yeah. You're flying. Beautiful. That's not Sam. Looks nothing there like There he is. <laughs> oh. That's a Glen Free Oval. <laughs> Glen Free Oval. Goal. Oh, oh, look out. This is colour television, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> and against your mob, Jim. Yes, it is. Yeah. Is that Ross Glen oh, Denning on there for a second? That's the best player. Can't be wrong. Oh, All right. Well, well done, Tiger. Well. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Do you want some tips from us? We'll get some tips, James. Croft? Uh, I think Geelong, uh, good luck to both sides, but I think Geelong will win. Uh, they deserve it. Duck? Yeah. I agree. I, I think the, uh, the Cats and uh, I think Steve Johnson for the Norm Smith and Motlop for the first goal for those who like a punt. Them? Uh, Hart says Geelong, Port Adelaide by 11. <laughs> and, uh, That'd be silly. <laughs> it doesn't really matter what I say from here, does it? Yeah. Wakes. Hart says power for me and Joel Corey for the Norm Smith. All right, I like Port Adelaide too. Tone, back to you. All right, good on you, James. All the very best with Triple M today. Uh, Wayne, Thank you. you're doing AW? Uh, no, no. no AW today. <laughs> All right, on, uh, as Sam and Shane just continue their little cat and mouse game, <laughs> I've got a sneaking suspicion someone's about to get wet. Uh, we'll take a break right here on Channel 9's grand <laughs> final breakfast. <laughs> we'll see you soon.
Yes, welcome back to Channel 9's Grand Final Breakfast with thanks to our friends at Carlton Draft. We've got the Plastic Cup coming up on Cox Plate Day. Looking forward to that. $100,000 up for grabs as we wake our way now around the uh, Channel 9 top. We've got uh, Scotty McGregor from Temptation, the model. Hey, Scotty. Good, mate. Yourself? You're looking, you're looking pretty fit there, Tony. Oh, it says you to get your gear off every night with your six-pack. <laughs> yeah, all right. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Give me a round of applause. Scott McGregor also got uh, from Postcards, Glenn Moriarty. Postcards going great, Guns. Yeah, it's done really well this year, so we're uh, just about winding up too, so it'd be nice to have a real holiday for a change. All right, terrific. Stay with us. Uh, still plenty to come. And uh, coming up on the Nine Network uh, early next year is one of the most eagerly anticipated miniseries around. It is, of course, Underbelly, which goes deep inside the underworld of Melbourne's gangland. And joining us now is, well, it's not Carl Williams, but it's uh, Guyton Grantley that actually plays Carl Williams. Uh, how are you, Guyton? I'm good, Tony. How are you, mate? Yeah, give him a round of applause. How, how do you actually audition for a role playing Carl Williams? Ah, uh, well, the normal process. You well, shoot people. <laughs> no, not that Carl did, by the way. I want to take that back in case you're watching Carl. Uh, yeah, yeah, lots of lots of uh, background research. Yeah, hanging out in the streets and yeah. hanging out with the bad boys. Yeah, learning and, some uh, stuff. Because, unfo well, well, fortunately or unfortunately, there is a resemblance there, isn't there? Oh, not unfortunately at all. I think he's a handsome devil. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Have you, have you had any contact with the family at all in terms of like just preparing for the part? No, no contact at all. Just had lots of stories from everything, from everybody in this whole city actually, which mm. is the most amazing thing I've discovered about Melbourne is everybody has a story. Everybody has some connection with someone involved in the gangland wars and um, I think the passion here is the most important thing. It's, it's just beautiful. It's awesome. <laughs> it's very, very, yeah. Yeah. No, I've never heard of the gangland wars described as beautiful, but anyway... Uh... <laughs> The passion about it. The, yeah, exactly. And you've actually had some of the real life characters, like Roberto, uh, Carl's uh, ex partner, I think, uh, actually arrive at the set wanting to know who was playing her and the like. Yeah, there's been stories of that. Robert, yeah. Ro the real Roberta Williams has turned up on set to um, try and find the lady playing her, Cat Stewart, who's doing an amazing job. So yeah. I'm sure she'll be very happy when she sees the show. All right, now you've got uh, one of your fellow uh, cast members here in Fletcher Humphreys. Who, who do you play, Fletcher? Oh, I play Mr. S. Who, and who's Mr. S? I scary. <laughs> Mr. Scary. I can't really tell him because he's actually in uh, witness protection, so if I mention his name, he might come looking for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're going to air live around Australia at the moment, do you? Hi, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, look, uh, all the very best. As we say, we're really looking forward to it, and I suppose one thing's for certain, the real people involved will be a captive audience. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them. I don't know about Tony. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for laughing, mate, because no one else did. But anyway, um, I'm not here as a comedian because this next fellow has flown in all the way from the United States. He is a regular visitor to Australia in general, and Melbourne in particular. Would you please give him a very warm Melbourne welcome at this Channel 9 Grand Final breakfast, Arj Barker. Thank you very much. Footy man. It's exciting. Thank you for having me. Quite an honor. You know, I first fell in love with footy when I went to the game a few years ago, and I noticed that the, that the fans wear scarves. I mean, how progressive is that? That the official fan wear for such a rugged sport is a scarf. Because, I mean, a lot of the fans, they're big guys. Big, surly men. And they're like, Oh, I'm gonna go down to the stadium. Oh, I'm gonna drink copious amounts of beer with my mates. And oh, I'm gonna watch one of the most violent sports on the face of the earth. But first, I'm gonna get me scarf. <laughs> oh! I don't wanna get the sniffles. <laughs> and I think it's gonna be a hell of a game. Dude, but both of these teams, I mean, are incredible. I mean, come on, the, Ge the Geelong Cats does anything in the world symbolize teamwork more than a cat? <laughs> and then the Port Power, and never underestimate a team which is fueled by dessert wine. <laughs> Now, I like the occasional drink, social drink. Don't want to drink too much. But, you know, on a date recently, I said, hey, would you like some wine? She said, no thanks, Arch. I don't want any wine. 
I was like, that's cool. I don't see, I don't see why you got to yell so loud. It's just you and me here in the car. Are you sure you don't want any wine, though? It's a pretty nice box of wine. He's like, fine, Arge, but just this much, just this much. I was like, fine, this much. And then I served it to her in a lasagna dish. It was about two and a half gallons. She had neglected the theory of volume displacement. Now she lives on the street. I'm only kidding. She already lived on the street. That's my pickup line. Hey, what's up? Are you into shelter? <laughs> Little mean for this early in the morning. But you know what? I mean that, like, it's all right to have a drink. In this country, you can have a drink. It's acceptable. In California, if I even have, like, one beer, yoga people come out of the trees. <laughs> and they're like, Arch, what are you drinking for? What are you drinking for? Don't you know the body's a temple? The body's a temple! The body's a temple! The body's a temple! Fine! The body might be a temple! But I'm not religious! <laughs> so what I prefer to do is to lease my temple to demons for private parties. <laughs> and, the, <laughs> and the way this tour's going, I don't think they're getting their deposit back. <laughs> but I'm trying to get more healthy. I have a personal trainer now but I think he's too personal. He's like, you call that a push-up? No wonder your parents got divorced. <laughs> well, I can feel the burn now in my feelings. I'm not a bodybuilder, though. I saw some bodybuilders at the gym, and I kind of felt sorry for them because, I mean, their arms were so big that they had to work out every single day just in order to stay strong enough to lift their own freakish arms. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine if you needed a spotter to high-five? <laughs> that wouldn't be very fun. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye. Terrific stuff. Hodge Barker, well done, Mike. Great to have you along, and of course, if you want to see Arch Barker, he is playing at the Melbourne Fringe Festival right through until October 13. As Molly would say, do yourself a favour and get along there. He is very, very funny. We're going to take a break here on the grand final uh, breakfast here on Channel 9, with thanks to our friends at Carlton Draft, the Plastic Cup. When we come back, one of the finest voices in Australia, if not the world. Stay with us. Some of the scenes there, these are the scenes from the MCG as a crowd nudging towards the 100,000 mark and those who want to be part of that crowd gather around in what is just a great day of festivity around the great Colossus itself and Geelong and Port Adelaide. Bounce down at 2.30, who will be walking away with that Premiership Cup tonight? Will it be Geelong? Yeah. Will it be Port Adelaide? Oh, the room split at this stage. Well, one thing's for certain, it's going to be a great game. All right, let's head back to the MCG now. Chris Jones has been out and about for us all morning. Chris, who have you got for us now? Oh, I've got some good friends with me uh, from down Geelong Way. How are you okay. feeling, guys? Are you excited? Oh, fantastic. There you go. I'll tell you what, Tony, we've had a fair bit of rain too. Little spots of rain all around the MCG. So it's definitely not crystal clear at the moment. There are still some tickets available. If you are an MCC member, you can get down here and see this great game. Now, I've got my friend Doug over here. I want to come around and just talk us through his kit. This man must be a desperado. Talk us through it. Oh, you know, just uh, thought I'd better get dressed up for the occasion. Uh, which is are they your grandpa's leggings? Yep, certainly are. He was a mad Collingwood fan, but like, I don't know what, I was, what he's thinking there. Um, well, I'll tell you what, there's plenty of people out here, TJ, there certainly is. And uh, the crowd is starting to build. Really, only now we're really starting to feel the atmosphere. And we still are expecting 95,000. Can't wait. All right, what's your tip, Chris, before we go? We want to get your tip. We want to get your tip, mate. 
Well, I think Geelong have been the best team all year, haven't they? So there's no reason they can't go all the way. And plus, I get lynched if I said Port Adelaide. <laughs> all right, give him a round of applause. Chris Jones, he's done a great job for us again. And of course, we'll see his report on the grand final on National 9 News tonight at 6 o'clock. All right, folks, uh, just about coming to the end. And uh, maybe, just maybe, we've saved the best till last, with all due respect to our other uh, performers this morning. She's got a great new single out called Kiss Your Mama. There it is there. Get yourselves down to the stores, uh, maybe not today, but on Monday, and pick it up. Kiss your mama it is. Vanessa Amorosi, she's here to perform it live. Vanessa Amorosi! final day folks that wraps it up for this edition of channel 9's grand final breakfast we hope you had a great day it really is a terrific way to kickstart grand final day here in melbourne so uh, just two words to finish on go cats yeah. Thank you.